Hello everyone, today we have with us on the Icon Liberty Advisor, Mr. Peter Piley. Welcome Mr. Peter to the show. Thank you, Shama. Um, well, uh, a home is everyone's dream and um, Liberty focuses primarily on you know bringing that dream to a possibility. As a Liberty Advisor who is a Platinum Achiever, uh, tell us more about uh, what are the implications of buying a home, you know, whether be it an investment, be it uh, a dream project of buying a home. Um, tell us more about it. Well, um, Liberty's main focus is to help people to achieve their, their dream of mm -hmm. owning own property. Mm -hmm. So generally, the migrant community, the first thing they think about after settling into a job will be buying a property and living in their own home. Right. So Liberty is goal is to help them to be financial. That's how it is working. Mm -hmm. And Liberty helps them to borrow mm -hmm. um, whatever maximum possible right. um, in their capacity. Mm -hmm. And that's one area where Liberty is helping. And the other area is um, the basic necessity of a car. Right. So Liberty can finance uh, for purchasing a car. Mm -hmm. And then the third option we have is uh, people who want to go into their own business. Right. Liberty can help them to set up their business. We can provide finance to start a business or finance to a running business, etc. Mm -hmm. So Liberty generally caters to the general financial needs of public mm -hmm. people. Yeah. All right, Mr. Piley, how do we prepare for a home loan? Well, bank, banks normally assess your um, application based on first thing your capacity to borrow right um, the second thing is uh, your um, credit conduct your credit history very important <laughs> and the third thing will be um, how much savings you have in your in your bank account basically mm -hmm. so um, the eligibility criteria you must have a stable employment right and uh, your income and your liabilities should be sufficient or you must have a surplus money mm -hmm. to afford to get into the new home loan right right so they look at your income whether it is consistent income mm -hmm. and they look at how how much liabilities you have mm -hmm. like uh, people might have a personal loan <clears throat> a credit card or a car loan those sort of things so mm -hmm. what they're looking for is whether with your income with your family's combined income mm -hmm. whether you can afford to keep making those repayments as well as the new home loan repayment right so that's how they assess you. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, one was, if you have a credit card, personal loan or car loan, how you have been conducting that loan, whether you have been making the payments on time, was there any delay in making any, any payment recently? Mm -hmm. So generally they look at your credit conduct and your credit history. Right. So there are credit reporting agencies who keep track of how you conduct your repayments how you conduct all your life, including your um, utility bills, for example. Absolutely. Gas bill, electricity, yeah. etc. So that creates a credit history for you mm -hmm. and that gives you a better score if you are conducting it very well. Right. So bank will definitely put a lot of emphasis on how you have been conducting your credit. Mm -hmm. And the third and most important thing is how much savings you have, mm -hmm. how much money you can contribute and how you have been saving. They look at the savings pattern go th going through your bank account statements they will know exactly whether you have saved a lump sum from somewhere or you have been progressively saving over a period of time, minimum mm. three months. Right. So these are the three important criteria when you apply for a home loan. When it comes to Liberty, there, there are so many home loan um, companies out there that offer offer you, you know, help with all this. But I think the edge that Liberty has um, is probably in their punchline. I was going through a website and they said, we like to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> uh, and it makes absolute sense because someone who's into a business and a young entrepreneur may not, may not always have the best of credit histories. Uh, but uh, in all good and true intentions, they have an amazing marketing plan and they have a beautiful business module and you know they can make it big. Unfortunately, most companies uh, don't um, offer help to such um, 
such individuals, you know, who can make a big change. And liberty uh, yeah, uh, comes that's to help That's exactly where liberty is standing out. Right. As the headline says, we, we want to make people financial. Absolutely. So we think outside the square. Mm -hmm. And we always um, try to help people because each individual has got their own personal circumstances. So we assess each and every situation and try to work out a solution for them. Mm -hmm. That's where we stand out when, when you compare with the major lenders, major banks. Mm -hmm. Because the banks will require every box to be ticked. Right. Whereas Liberty will help people who cannot tick all the boxes. Right. So it can be a credit impairment or it can be a short term employment or it can be a new business that you have started. It can be anything. So the, our aim is to just find a solution for you mm -hmm. and get you financial. So help you achieve your goal. It can be buying a car, buying a home or starting a business. Right, yeah. right. Um, I think that's amazing. And um, a lot of people out there will, you know, be in need of such a service, you know, who are, who's ready to understand someone's uh, dream objectives and goals and exactly. help them achieve that, you know, in spite, despite their, you know, background or, you know, despite what, what have, they have gone through. Because yeah. we all know there's a lot of up, ups and downs in life for everyone. And, you know, just, just a down in life should not be, a, you know, a reason where, you know, you can't think further or, you know, you can't progress further. Yeah, um, that's exactly the point. We find a solution for everybody's needs. And we always think outside the square and try to help people get mm -hmm. financial. Well, um, right now, I would say it's a buyer's market. What's your thought on it? Well, it may not be a buyer's market in every part of uh, Australia. the market, mm -hmm. every part of mm -hmm. Australia. Mm -hmm. There are some pockets where it is seller's market, some pockets where it is buyer's market. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a mixed uh, situation right now. We had a property market slump. Right. So the market right. went down around 6 to 7 percent. Mm -hmm. And now it is actually coming back. Mm -hmm. So recently Melbourne showed a raise of about 0.5 percent in the market rate. So we can see the market is coming back. So we, it's too early to predict whether it is a buyer's market or a seller's market. But if someone has um, got the finances, someone is ready to buy a property, I would suggest buy it now. <laughs> because the, the market is... So you would, you would agree, to me, agree with me when I say it's a buyer's market. Yeah. <laughs> It is likely to go up now. Right, right. And we do see the possibility. I heard about the uh, first term buyers. Yes, 2020. Uh, yes. yes. Um, yeah. Tell so us more about that. Yes, please. Yeah. The first term buyers support is a new initiative by the central government. Mm -hmm. and it starts on 1st of January 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan is. There was always a support from the central government for first home buyers, uh, new home yes, buyers. Yes, this yeah. is over mm -hmm. and above the first home buyers mm -hmm. grant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what the government is planning to do is to support 10,000 people a year, right? Uh, first home buyers to get into their property. Mm -hmm. So well, how do you how you qualify? You must have the five percent deposit saved, right? And the government is going to guarantee you for fifteen percent deposit. Oh, amazing! So you can borrow basically ninety-five percent of the price of the property of the, price, yep, without paying mortgage insurance. That mm -hmm. fifteen percent guarantee will help you save money on mortgage insurance oh that's an amazing scheme yeah. and uh, would you would you elaborate on how we can you know if it's only supported uh, supported for 10 uh, 10, people 10 people how do per we year, and the qualification should be you must be employed and earning uh, if you are a single uh, income family mm -hmm. uh, you can earn up to 120 sorry if you are a single person mm -hmm. you, you must be earning up to 125 thousand a year mm -hmm. and if you are a family uh, earning two combined. earning members, yep. then you can be earning 200,000. Okay, of a combined income of... Uh, combined income. Right. Um, so up to the 125 for a single person mm -hmm. and 200,000 for a family, you will qualify. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and you must have the 5% deposit saved as well. I think that's that's something anyone who dreams of a home should be having with them, at least a 5% of uh, the entire deposit, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It's it's yes. not a hard, hard thing to achieve anyways. <laughs> um, well, if you have other liabilities like uh, credit cards, car, personal loans, car loans, etc., it could be a challenge. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my opinion, everyone should aim for saving that 5% as quickly as possible. Right. If yeah. you are looking to buy a property. Yep. And secure a home in 2020. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, tell us, you, you're a platinum achiever with uh, Liberty. Yes. How did it all happen? Well, I've been in business for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, so. This achievement I would probably attribute to all my customers who have been with me, who have trusted me. Mm -hmm. 
and um, to a certain extent the, the level of service that they get from me is mm-hmm. coming bringing them back to me mm-hmm. um, and um, I always put myself in the customer's shoes to understand mm-hmm. their needs better right so that will help me to help them better right so that's the secret of mm-hmm. achieving that I uh, I also know that you know you uh, you just mentioned that you know you've uh, been in business for the last 10 years uh, and uh, your experience is definitely vaster than 10 years. I uh, you know uh, speaking to you earlier I understand that you've had an engineering background. Yes, I'm basically uh, I came to Australia as a toolmaker. Uh-huh. And I got into manufacturing, mm-hmm. predominantly car parts manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And to a certain extent um, car park um, prototyping, modeling etc. Mhm. and then when the manufacturing industry was uh, not going well mm-hmm. i decided to change my field to mm-hmm. finance okay yeah that's how <laughs> i ended up being a mortgage broker interesting uh, and um, i think uh, being a mortgage broker you'll you'll never go out of business because everyone is in need of finance and you are you are there to help <laughs> yes of course and it is it is it's a good um, field to be in mm-hmm. very rewarding and very satisfying job mm-hmm. and also it has got its own challenges you must be always competitive you must be always update with the policies with the lending regulations mm-hmm. all all those challenges are there mm-hmm. but it's i'm really happy and it's good to be in a role where you can help people right right um a first home is a dream for a few people a milestone for yet a few another um but at the end of the day when it comes to buying a first home you know it's it's a big decision and uh, there are so many things that we have to look into um i i myself have gone through you know the hurdles of uh, buying a first home and i i know the hardships that we had incurred yes. as as we you know, struggle to you know get into the first home uh, uh could you tell us you know how do we how does one make this pathway easy or is is there a way that you know you could you know start making it a little more simpler because there are so many things out there in the market you know be it um, uh be it the um, auctions or be it private sales uh, so many avenues uh, of buying a first home what is your suggestion and how do people start off with it well if you are a first home buyer i would start with um, getting a pre approval from the bank first right so that you will be at least 50 60% certain that there is someone out there who can lend you the money yeah. mm-hmm. and then i would suggest um, study the market right and decide which area you pro- you will probably want to buy mm-hmm. maybe short list two or three suburbs and then see how the market is trending on those suburbs mm-hmm. whether the prices are going up or down and keep track of um, the sales happening in that area what's the average waiting time or you know average study time that one like needs to invest you know before you buy a home because you said study the market it depends on 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 your um, knowledge about the property and the mm-hmm. market mm-hmm. um if you have absolutely zero knowledge about australian property etc i would say hold on minimum 3 months you mm-hmm. must study the market you can go to a lot of websites realestate.com mm-hmm. domain uh, my domain all mm-hmm. these websites are keeping keep keeping you informed about right. the sale in the area mm-hmm. so let's say you are you are trying to buy a four bedroom house right and see in your suburb how much are the prices the the sale is happening for mm-hmm. recent sales what are the what is the price the recent houses have been sold mm-hmm. and compare the price with the property that you might consider mm-hmm. and also you can also get um, valuation done uh, by the estimates yeah. mm-hmm. estimates from these uh, websites mm-hmm. so they will give you an indicative price range right and see if that is fitting into your budget mm-hmm. now coming back to the actual purchase i would like you to do a pre purchase study of the property right so a, a conveyancing agent can help you with that right get a copy of the section 32 of the property mm-hmm. get that reviewed by the conveyancing agent and get the go ahead legally everything mm-hmm. is good for the mm-hmm. good to buy good to buy mm-hmm. and then you can negotiate with the with the vendor mm-hmm. so once you have the background knowledge of how much reasonable price is that mm-hmm. property then 
that gives you the power to negotiate with the bank with the mm-hmm. vendor mm-hmm. and also with the support of a pre approval in hand right you are in a confident position to go and make an offer to the property mm-hmm. and then negotiate the price mm-hmm. Sometimes when you enter uh, an auction, um, you know you do things out of excitement. Uh, yes. What would be your advice to people who you know who have the instinct to go in for an auction and uh, bid? Well, auction always uh, we must remember auction is an unconditional sale. Mm-hmm. The you can't go back once you win the auction. You must pay the deposit and you must buy the property. Right. So if you are not sure about your finances, or if you don't have a uh, sufficient funds to back up any shortfall in the valuation. I would suggest to not go for an auction mm-hmm. because it is an unconditional sale, and you must buy it. Right. So I would suggest if you are a first-time buyer or new to the property market, I would suggest uh, go for a normal sale mm-hmm. through a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. The advantage is you get 14 days to get the finance approval. Mm-hmm. So you can sign a contract subject to finance approval and subject to any other conditions that you would like to put, mm-hmm. like a structural inspection of the property. Mm-hmm. pest and termite inspection of the property right. these are all important things that you must consider mm-hmm. when you buy a property buy an existing property yes when you buy an existing <laughs> property exactly so that right. brings us to uh, building a new home yes. uh, which is a uh, you know whole different ball game altogether it and is, it is yeah uh, uh, <laughs> i would probably say don't go for it unless you know it's very very important because i've gone into the you know troubles of buying building a new home so what would be your thought on uh, building versus buying a new home <laughs> Buying has its own merits because um, you you see what exactly you are buying, right? And normally you buy in a built-up area, mm-hmm. so all the infrastructure, schools, shopping centers, bus stops, etc., are already in place. Mm-hmm. Um, predominantly, when you build a new house, you are building in a new area, mm-hmm. and um, that means all these sort of facilities may be mm-hmm. still coming. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. But the advantage is you get everything new. Mm-hmm. Uh, to certain extent, you can. build it to your satisfaction or to your liking mm-hmm. like you can choose the color you can choose the furniture you can choose the flooring mm-hmm. or all the benefits are there um but you have to go through that strenuous task of selecting all these uh, building um, features mm-hmm. and then the agony of waiting selecting your builder in fact <laughs> selecting the builder yeah <laughs> followed the by the of waiting that 6 to 8 months to get into your new mm, house if you're lucky 6 <laughs> to 8 months <laughs> yeah it is it's a it's a long process it's a to set an extent it will put you under pressure mhm and all, all also what i see is the budget right you know people start off with a certain amount of building cost but then finally the the cost can blow out mhm and suddenly you get a new home but you don't have money to buy the furniture you don't have money to do the curtains mm-hmm. you don't have money to do the landscaping right so this is the problem i i see very often mm-hmm. in building mm-hmm. whereas in buying an established property yeah, all these pressures all are there. already taken off you right uh, but the difference is the cost so when you buy an established property you are actually going to pay stamp duty on the full mm-hmm. price right whereas when you are building you pay stamp duty only on the land on the land and also you get the government support the 10000 dollars first home buyers grant mm-hmm. and stamp duty exemption but so isn't the first home buyers grant applicable even for an existing property if it's an existing property which is not sold as a dwelling as a um, fully residential mm. property this should be the first sale then you get the 10000 dollars ah so it should be built and uh, it should be sold within 5 five, five years mm-hmm. and you should be the first buyer first buyer as a residential property ah so to make it more clear you can buy a block of land mm-hmm. build a house mm-hmm. and sell it to me as a first home buyer i can get the grant ah. so you can get the grant i can and also you get, get a grant too yeah. <laughs> Um uh, Mr. Pali I've heard people talk about buying investment buying property through the super funds. Uh, could It's you elaborate on the super fund? Yes. Yeah. What normally happens when you when you work for an employer mm-hmm. the employer is contributing to your super fund? Yes. And it normally goes to a, a professionally managed super fund. Right. Instead of that you can set up your own super fund. Mm-hmm. That's why it is called self managed super, super fund. And once you have enough money in that fund, mm-hmm. you can use that fund to buy a property, buy an investment property, not for your own occupation. Mm-hmm. 
So normally the uh, Liberty can lend you up to 80% of the purchase price. Wow. So the US super fund must contribute 20%. 20%. Plus plus. Okay. Yeah. That's a good option for many people who have sufficient money in their super fund. Right. So ideally, we would expect your fund to have about 100,000 plus. Yes. Uh, ideally, maybe up to 200,000. Mm -hmm. And then you are in a position to start thinking about it. It's a good option to buy uh, an investment property under the self-managed super fund. Mm -hmm. And Liberty can definitely help you set up the fund and lend you money to buy the property as well. Wow, beautiful. That's... So people who have um, good uh, self-managed, uh, good balance in their super funds mm -hmm. can think about setting up their own super fund. Yeah, just to make your funds work harder for you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and it's a very safe investment to do in properties. Right, yeah. right. So especially with definitely the, with the I would uh, encourage market. everyone who has got good uh, super fund balance to think about it. Mm -hmm. what according to you would be the best investment in Australia now? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a sure it's answer, a but yeah, question. it could be a tricky one a as very well. Tricky question. Um, well, investing in property is generally a safe investment in Australia mm -hmm. because if you look at the property market, mm -hmm. it's always growing. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, in the past 50 years, in every eight to 10 years, the property market has just doubled in value. Yes. So that, that way I would say, Property is a very safe investment, mm -hmm. but it will have its own ups and downs, just like the recent dump slump we had yes, yes. recently. So there will be some dips there, mm -hmm. but in general, the graph is going up. Right. I, th I think we have to follow that vicious circle where there's a boom and a recession. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. An experienced investor will mm -hmm. buy when the property market is down mm -hmm. and sell, sell when, it when it is it's up. up. So that's how generally <laughs> experienced investors work. Right. Right. So you need a little bit more um, study and experience in deciding when to buy and when to sell. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I would say definitely investing in property is a very safe investment for anybody. All right. Yeah. Interesting. It is. Um, well, thank you for touching upon all those uh, points. Uh, I'm sure many of our viewers out there would uh, totally benefit from you know what you have just uh, shared with us. Yeah. And um, to all of you out there, you know, uh, Mr. Pilot from Liberty would love to talk about the elephant in the room as well. So sure. if you have concerns, if you have you know a a great idea and if you can't really get it forward i think um you have an answer here with mr piley helping us out uh thank you so much mr piley uh for being here and sharing us sharing your thoughts with us today thank it you. is a thanks pleasure a having you today thanks a lot for the opportunity to come and share my experience with you <laughs> and by all means anyone can give me a call anytime and have a chat we wish you all the very best thank you <laughs>